Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. What up, buds? Quick plug up top. If you live in Los Angeles, come to my show at the Comedy Store Thursday, 125, 8 p.m., Glazer's After Party, although I might need to change it to pre-party because <laughs> when we were Wednesdays at 1030, it was an after party. Now it's a pre-party. Or just a party. Or just a party. So come to my party at the Comedy Store. Neil Brennan, Luke Schwartz, um, uh, 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 Leonard Smith Jr., Omid Singh, and I'm working on two more. Um, not dudes. So count on that. I will also have a bunch of and a bunch of gong, 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 wah, wah, wah. I know that now we have new YouTube subscribers, so I can't use the words I want to for those experiences, <laughs> but it's a great time. It always sells out. So come to my show at the Comedy Store, 125, 8 p.m. Heck yes. Hell of a time slot. Yeah. Congratulations. Jumping into the new year with a hot eight o'clock. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. It feels really good to, oh, I mean, you've been a massive supporter of that show all last year. Like, I mean, from DJing to bringing friends out to helping me book comedians. And uh, and I'll tell you what, Wednesday at 1030 at night, tough sell, tough ticket. I loved coming to that show. It was a great lineup every time. You always bring the heat as the host and a comedian. And it's just like, this is exciting for you to level up into this 8 p.m. slot because it's been such a phenomenal fucking show. And we've just needed more people to come out Wednesday, 1030. It's rough. It's rough. But I loved being there every time. So congratulations on this uh, new time slot. And I'm so excited to see what the new year brings for you. Thank you, Mary Jane. I, I can't wait to see what the new year brings for you, too. Thanks. This is our first. Uh, is this our first? No, app? we were here last week. OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy, cannabis, cooking, culture, calling shit out, and um, memory and memory recall. Ooh, actually, it is about recall. Yeah, yeah, because we have so many things that happened recently that we are going to be celebrating today. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay, first and foremost, other way. Uh, yeah. I went viral last end of last year for my Taylor Swift joke. An excellent, excellent, excellent joke. I should have written for Joe Coy. Oh my God. Did, did you watch the Golden Globes? I watched them through Twitter clips. Which is really the only way that you need to watch them. I actually sat down for the first time in a long time and watched the whole awards show. So I cringed in real time with Oof. the rest of the world. Oof. Oof. Tough job. Don't wish it on anyone. Sure. Great money. Tough gig. Fine. Swing and a hard miss, though, hard miss on though. every level. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. Um, and he had a bad Taylor Swift joke where then she then served him a sip and a stare. <laughs> I mean, she was wearing the most gorgeous venom green dress, and everyone was like, it represents money. And I was like, it also represents how fucking like powerful she is if you fuck with her because she mm -hmm. can like shoot you down with a stare just like any fucking venomous creep. Like she just narrowed her eyes slightly and sipped her drink and everyone was like ooh ooh the cool thing yeah. about that too and I'll get to another point in a moment but um so to me green means renewal new year and there was a lot of swifties on twitter where i was following everything saying old her would have fake laughed at that to appease and knew her does not have time for these fools and their games and so to me that green dress also represents a um a, re a renewal or a growth. Yes. I think she represents all of how all women want to move forward in 2024, which is not fucking dealing with the fuckery and saying it's okay. No, no. absolutely no. Fuck no, bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is, yeah. you know, absolutely not. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm not going to make you feel okay because you failed with your joke and laugh politely at it. No, not doing it. That's what's up. <laughs> well, my joke was great. Your joke was fucking great. And it blew up. Shout yeah. out Travis Kelsey. Thank you for faving it. And now my algorithm on my TikTok. Wait, you got to say what the joke is for anyone oh, who doesn't know. It's okay. a great joke. Um, I'll, I'll abridge it. I just, you know, I don't want to run material by you on no, here. No, no. I know. But for anyone, any listener who hasn't heard the joke, you got to have some context. Um, I took mushrooms and went to go see the movies. The movies. I went to the movies, <laughs> took a bunch of mushrooms. The only thing playing when I got there was The Exorcist. I tripped so hard 
And I got so scared and I felt so bad leaving The Exorcist that I snuck into anything else just to cleanse my palate. And it turns out the only thing playing was Taylor Swift's Eras movie. And I'm tripping. And it turns out that she is touched by God because I danced with a gay guy and four young girls for the next two hours, cleansed my soul. She made it happen. And I left there being like, we all Barbenheimered. We all went to see Barbie and Oppenheimer. But if you can do yourself the favor and Xer Swift, you will be a better person for it. And fantastic. Yeah. And so good. You know, Travis Kelsey faved it, which means he hopefully showed it to her. And now my algorithm and my explore page is all like Taylor Swift fans, things adjacent to Taylor. It's a supportive community. Everyone is kind. Everyone has hobbies and is working on things that are they're making themselves better. Like I saw somebody hold up a, a ceramic thing. They're like, I'm trying, I'm trying. And all these people were like, it looks great. Keep going. Let's yeah. do it. And they're all Taylor Swift fans. I don't know. I, I don't know another algorithm that has that kind of like kindness and support, but hers. And I'm so happy to be a very small peripheral part of that community. It's just making me feel better as a human being. I would say beyond it being an algorithm, it's a community and a movement, you know, mm. and, and, and a new wave of um, young feminism, you know, that embraces everyone. Like it's not feminism that's just for girls and women. It's feminism that embraces men and boys and the trans community and the queer community. Like we're all just like being pro woman power and woman empowerment in a way that benefits all of us. And it's not like excluding anyone, but it is very much about like, you know, 2023 was, I just read a story that was like, it was the year of the girl. And then someone else quoted and they were like, it was the year of the woman. Come Yo. on, let's be real about this, but about like femininity and power being synonymous and not one being, you know, a, a submissive thing, but like the, you know, she's so powerful and she's, yeah. she's bringing people together with that power. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I put a little thank you on my TikTok where I was like, honestly, none of us know each other. I'm happy to be here. Y'all are making me feel great. Thanks so much. And somebody just wrote like, welcome, friend. Nice. I was like, hell yeah, friend. That feels good. It does feel good. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. It's interesting you say the girl versus woman thing too, because uh, I've really tried to fix my language where I'm like, what's up, girl? Instead of being like, I was talking to this woman. And yeah. I got nervous about posting my thank you to the Taylor Swift algorithm and community because I don't want to be a man around young girls. That is not my intention with anything. And then I looked at who was commenting on my stuff and who it was, and it truly is girls and women. It is all shapes, all mm -hmm. sizes, all demographics, all ages. There's dudes in there. There's other me's in there. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this feels like I can actually uh, have gratitude for this, and I can also have some fun in here as well. Yeah, and and I think something that I think a lot about is just you know that we're all people. I mean, you know, that's like been a big sort of like fun debatable point on one of the videos that I made where I talked about pregnant people, and someone was like, ah, you know, losing their shit, and I was like, listen, it's there's no harm in talking about people women being people in an inclusive way where you could it that means women and girls and people with uteruses who don't identify as women non-binary trans people like it's just you know we can just call them all people mm -hmm. um so that's an easy way to sort of like get around the like huh, you know am i worried about like an age gate or you know any of that kind yeah. of stuff but anyway i think you're doing a great job mike like just you know interacting with like a community of people where you're like I, I'm learning things as I'm going and I'm trying to do better. It's awesome. Yeah. And I can also have my comedy store friends where we just make fart sounds and interrupt each other while we smoke weed. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All can be true. We like we love to see men existing in spaces that make them slightly uncomfortable while learning and trying to do better. And then also just going and hanging out with their dudes and being like, Pfft. yeah, <laughs> great. You would fit in. You do fit in so well I, with that sound. Thank you so much. Do you ever do the double hand? No. The armpit? Please go for it. Oh, the double hand? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've lost my oh, touch. Oh, no. Sixth oh, grade no. me would be so mad. You've aged out of the double hand fart. I've aged out of my double I hand mean, I fart. I mean, I can do, I can do. Like, Put your hands to your mouth. Give it a go. Okay. <laughs> no. Wow. What, what happens to us? Yeah, we just grow We grow out beyond. of the double hand fart. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. What a... What I'm gonna okay, my New Year's resolutions are yep. as follows. Bring get good at the double head fart again for mm -hmm. the first time in a while. Mm -hmm. Learn how to roll joints quick, easy, and 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 with precision. Okay. That's it. 
I'm good after that. Great. Yep. That's all you need. Farting to and to joint rolling. Move your way through the world. Have everyone love you and fall in love with you at a party. They're going to be like, great. Mike well, Glazer's here. Thank God. Please do the fart and roll a joint. <laughs> 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 Thank God he's here. One more time. Try it again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, You're like I Joe am... Coy on stage at the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking blowing it. It's bombing. <laughs> bombing um <laughs> wow well i love that you're you're in that algo you're in the t-swift community that that's you know <laughs> what is floating you through the first part of this new year thanks i'm so embarrassed please don't be oh you man come back like next week and demonstrate for all of us how you've learned okay to do it again yeah give me a week <laughs> give me a week and i got this can i say something about my algorithm and what it floated me into oh please i got notification this week that not once but twice iconic supermodel from my fucking girlhood and heyday of the 80s and 90s, Helena Christensen, famous, famous, famous Danish Victoria's Secret model, fucking supermodel of the one name. I don't wake up for less than $10,000. Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, fucking like of that era, of the supermodels. Yeah. Liked not one, but two of my sandwich videos. Amazing. Holy macaroni. Oh, look at her. I mean, I cannot believe that those eyes looked at my face and then hit like twice. twice. She's so fucking cool. And she also does a bunch of philanthropy work. She works with uh, cancer research and climate change organizations. And like, I think she's in her 50s now. And she's just like, a, you know, I mean, she's Danish. So she's fucking radically cool in so many fucking ways. And she's just, um, I mean, I've known who she is my whole life. And I've looked up to her my whole life as just an incredible, powerful woman. Gorgeous, beauty, iconic. And um, fuck, blew my mind. I was like, holy shit. She looked at my sandwich and she liked it. She and then looked she, at my and sandwich she, and she liked and it. And then she liked another one, <laughs> which was about emasculation. <laughs> I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. So that was nice. Thank you. That's very cool. Felt For everyone, because uh, we do have a bunch of new folks here from Try Guys, which we'll get into in a moment. Oh, yeah. But for everyone who doesn't know your sandwich series, like I had to explain my joke, please hit them with what the sandwich series is. I have a social media project uh, where I make myself sandwiches and talk about sexism and misogyny and reproductive rights and other things that interest and affect me and women and girls and people around the world. And I started it um after a bunch of dudes told me to go make them a sandwich, um, I wrote an uh, essay about sexism and those were the comments. And I was like, wait, what? And so now this is my passion project. And um, yeah, I put out two two or three videos a week. It's on what handle? At It's the Mayo for Me on all platforms. There it is. Thanks, man. And it's growing. It is growing. You popped off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. A double fave? Yeah. Nice. It felt real good. Maybe you'll end up making a sandwich with her. I mean, dreams, dreams. I have plans and dreams and making sandwiches with um, iconic women from all backgrounds is, is a big piece of it. Like I would love to sit down with Helena Christensen and Padma Lakshmi and Rachel Maddow and Michelle Obama and, you know, ev literally anyone just be like, what is your sandwich? How do you make your sandwich? And also tell me about your life as a person in your field as yeah. a woman. Wow, that would be cool. Taraja yeah. P. Henson. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, we could just sit here and name amazing women for the next half hour. I could do it. Could you? Mm. Name a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah, where so guys funny. just panic and they're like, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I saw one dude look at the dog and say Maggie to his girlfriend. And it was like, uh, the dog? It was like, yeah. it was very funny. Yeah. It's so, I really, I really do enjoy those um, videos, those TikToks where like women are just trying to catch dudes out being idiots. Like, do you know the pumpkin bar recipe one? No. There was. So oh, trick me, trick me. Uh, Can you trick me? I, I I get so yeah. Pretend you know if we live together, uh -huh. I'd be like, hey Mike, um, if I sent you to the store with a grocery list to make nachos, mm -hmm. and everything was on that list except for tortilla chips, would you or would you not buy tortilla chips? I would, but I would be like, this fool forgot to write the most important ingredient. And then I would come home and I would act like I didn't buy them. And I would do this whole bit and I would make this whole thing, not a scene. I wouldn't try and make you feel bad. I'd be like, oh, I, they weren't on the list. And then I would, I would like a hero coming through the fog, mm. um, like, like a low rel at the end of Get Out, saving the day. I would come back through with the tortilla chips and be like, oh, I'm just kidding. Of course I got them. Yeah, I think you would get a red flag on that one. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. 
Well, the, the original story of what happened was oh, this no. fucking dude went to the store. His wife had sent him with a list to make, I think it was pumpkin bars. Uh -huh. And he, she hadn't put canned pumpkin on the list. So he made a TikTok about how he was going to teach her a fucking lesson because basically he called home and she declined the call. And then he called again to see if they needed pumpkin and she declined the call again. So he did not buy the canned pumpkin. And then he, he she called him on his way back home from the store. And she was like, yeah, I need canned pumpkin. Can you go back and get it? And he was like, absolutely not. And it was this whole thing where he was like, I'm going to teach her a lesson, and yada, yada. And, and every woman was like, why didn't you just buy the fucking canned pumpkin if you knew she needed canned pumpkin for the pumpkin bars? She's got a lot going on. She forgot to write it down. You know that's an ingredient. Why are you being a fucking weird, like, controlling asshole about it? Totally. Yeah, I don't. I guess I'm I'm unfortunately in his same camp, and I slid <laughs> right into the trap that I asked you to set. I Here's how dumb I am. <clears throat> hey, Mary Jane, will you set a trap so I can walk right into it? Here you go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. Looney, Looney Tune sound. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Because the green flag partners are the ones who are like, you know, so the woman's like, hey, babe, if I... I sent you to the store with a list for nachos and tortilla chips weren't on it. What would you do? And he's like, buy tortilla chips, of course. Yeah. And just assume that you forgot them. And then, you know, if if we already have them, I would just be like, now we have more. Now we have more. That Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I do not stand with this man about the, well, if it wasn't on there and I don't know if you need it, then I'm not going to get it. And I'm going to teach you a lesson about it and put it on TikTok. Like, yeah, I don't man. love all of that. Uh, I mean, the idea of like... There's two types of people, right? Like, I think about this action. Oh, I wish I could show it to you. There is an action Bronson clip from his new season of F That's Delicious. And it opens and they're in Italy. And there's two men outside drinking wine. And he comes out with a plate of cheese. And he goes, have some cheese, have some cheese. And one guy grabs it and goes, awesome. And the other guy goes, oh, not right now, not right now. I have my... um." my retainer in i'd have to take it out and and action goes no my retainer i got my retainer in and he goes don't put that on don't put that on and action goes you should have been cool dude you should have just taken the cheese said thank you and then taken your retainer out later we're on camera that is what it is and he's like let's try it again and then he comes back out with the cheese and the guy goes oh man amazing and action bronson goes see how good does that feel and that i think about that every day the person who shut down the cheese Versus the person who just says yes and is thankful and handles their version of whatever that is right. later. You, you know what I yes mean? And you always. got a yes and. Get mm -hmm. that pumpkin, dude. What yeah. are you doing? Get the fucking pumpkin. Uh, Don't salt the latkes behind someone's back. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and if it happens once, it can never happen again. <laughs> Yes. Word. So good on all of that. Well, that was a good rollicking. I've, I've even lost track of where we were going from there. Oh, I'll look at our list because we're so prepared. We have topics. Oh, yeah. Y'all. Oh, well, this actually ties in because of you were talking about grocery shopping and you wanted to talk about when we're going to be rich this year because we're manifesting six oh, figure lives. Abundance, thinking this year, growth, uh, n new things, good, good, welcoming the good in, letting go everything that doesn't work. And um, yes, it just made me think. I was shopping at this, there's a warehouse in North Hollywood that is European imports, all sorts of crazy, like super, you, you can buy caviar and truffles and all that sort of stuff, or you can just buy like really nice jam and biscuits. You can buy chocolate croissants. I got you some compound butter from there for Christmas. Ooh, if anyone listening, I just swallowed involuntarily and I bet some <laughs> other people did too. Holy smokes. You could hear the click. You just got my juices flowing there's a whole section dedicated to just portuguese sardines there is like there's an entire freezer where you can just dive in and get french beautiful croissants and baked goods there's like a whole the cheese section is wild and i was thinking about how i could spend money if i had an unlimited food budget how I would spend my money because I live really well. I live alone. I shop for myself. I don't, you know, I'm not shopping for a household or anything. So I'm already like pretty bougie with my shopping. But I was thinking like, what would what would a day in your dream shopping look like if someone said, okay, you, ha you have a dinner party for 12 tonight. Yeah. And you have an unlimited budget. Dream as big as you like. And you have you have a sous chef. Okay. Or maybe you don't even necessarily need to cook. Like I don't really cooking. think I even need a sous. <laughs> well, or, or, or you're just like cooking to stock your kitchen and then you're going to get a professional person come in and actually cook the dinner. 100%. But like what would your 
dream stocking I, of the fridge look like? Where would you go? Mm-hmm. What would you have flown in? Like, I was just thinking like, it would be fun to dream about that for a minute. I love that. Can I add weed into it? Because weed is so tied into like big, Absolutely. luxurious, rich meals for me. And like, yes. and, and, and pot's a big part of that. Yeah. You got a bong appetite your pantry. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun game. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to our friends who uh, created that show. Um, Vanessa Leverado and Barack uh, Obama. Uh, Abdullah Saeed. Oh, yeah. That whole gang. They're fucking amazing. Amazing. If you haven't watched it, it's a great fucking show. So I was in Zanku the other day mm-hmm. and I thought about how amazing. Wait a second, it would did be. you say Barack Obama? Yeah. I Sorry. thought he did Bong Appetit. My brain took that long to catch up. What the fuck are you talking about? Didn't he wasn't in wasn't he the EP of Bong Appetit? I don't understand why that's a joke. Just because it's not real and there's no way it could be real and so i said something that is as far away from reality oh, i thought as i possible. missed like some like connection to barack obama actually being okay no but i wouldn't watch his new movie it's not good the one on netflix anyway we don't have to get into that okay uh, the point is it was a bad joke <laughs> no no i'm not <laughs> just truly was like i don't want to step on or miss something that was like a thing but you're saying that i just missed a, an absurd moment that wasn't connected to anything i would argue you didn't miss anything okay <laughs> carry on sorry <laughs> yeah and, and i think most would agree you, you didn't miss much okay <laughs> got it so <laughs> i was in i was in zanku and if we're gonna talk dinner party i'm done with chocolate fountains i'm done with fondue i'm done with buffets i want carve your own big spiral rotisserie meat in the middle of the table, I want a lamb and a steak and a chicken on a, a vertical spit spinning around in the middle of my dining room where everyone can help themselves to hunks and hunks and hunks of meat. Wow. How awesome would that be? Holy shit. Have you ever been to a churrascaria? I have not gone yet. I know what it is and I, I would love to go. You, it, I, yes. yes. I, green Green side up all day long. Just like giant swordfuls and skewers coming in your direction with men holding dripping plates of fucking everything. And yeah. It's wild. Like I'm on I'm not I'm on a like abridged carnivore diet right now. Abridged just because I'm not doing it fully. Um, but I'll tell you what, if I had rotating meat spits in my kitchen <laughs> at all times, I would I would be real happy and I'd be dialed in diet wise. Phenomenal. Right? Okay. That, that's a big dream for me. Um Yeah, also I I, I love the idea of like 2024, we are over fondant fountains and what was the other thing that you said? Uh, fondue mm-hmm. and um, buffets because those are all like, f- we don't need the germ. The I'm done with jacuzzi microbes. eating. Yeah, ju- exactly. <laughs> you know what like, I'm saying? Whoa. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> I don't need a bunch of hands in my spa. No. Yeah. Great. H- hygienic meals for one moving forward. <laughs> please. Please. Got it. Um, what else would be there for me? Um, I- I'll tell you what. I'm a big caviar bump guy. Oh. So I wouldn't mind like a little caviar bump on my pillow every single night. Like get rid of the Andy's mint. Give me a little like snooze snoozer snooze just bump. Post sleep caviar? Just like when I want to go to bed, I need a little thing of caviar on a on a uh cracker on my pillow. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. That'd like be on great. a little bleeny. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um and then weed wise, weed wise, I uh I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind that. Like if there was some kind of like dab fountain where it's just this broiling thing of concentrate that you Jesus. can just stick a straw in and take a big rip at any time. Oh, my God. That I wouldn't mind. That's crazy. OK. Some kind of geyser situation. Jesus. In, like if I'm going to dream big, you know how like a great dab or even a hot knife is it's all that vapor coming up all at once. Um, If we could make a geyser in my backyard next to the fire pit where you just drop like a pound of concentrate in there and you can just stick your head over the geyser at any time and take a big hit and using the earth's um, heat to heat up that concentrate, I think that'd be a real fun way to smoke weed. Okay. (laughs) Dreaming dreaming as big as you could possibly go. As big as I I could possibly go. I don't even know how geologically, geothermally, I don't know how any of that would work, but it sounds crazy. Well, when I went to like Capetta's birthday party and we went to the, um, what's the place where they do all the tricks and flip the shrimp into your... Benihana. Benihana. We went there and we were all joking about how fun it would be to take a dab off of the Benihana grill. Uh And so all I'm thinking is like, if I went to Yellowstone... 
And I dropped old like faithful? and I dropped a little, <laughs> little hash in old faithful and then stuck Fantastic. my head over it and just get ripped. I just you're just making me think of like all of the fucking dudes who have like blown things up in their backyard and it's gone wrong that I've seen on TikTok. Have you ever seen that one where the guy does like the giant like baking soda and vinegar fountain and basically like it explodes into his whole backyard? Yes. I could just imagine you doing that, but like with hash oil. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, that was the end of Mike Glazer. That's the end of me. All the firefighters are just sitting down and looking at the sky. Yeah. Like, it's what? just you like trapped in am- amber like a bug against the side of your house. Like, whoops, he went overboard with the old BHO. <laughs> he thought it would be cool. It was his end. It was. Arguably a cool way to go. Yeah. Oh, if I'm the Luke Skywalker of a... Uh, of, uh, uh, of Earth. What are you talking Isn't about? Isn't he the guy? Harrison Ford. Ah, Come shit. on. Dropped Han it. Solo. Yeah, it's Han Solo in Carbon. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I should have quit and just <laughs> said, what about you, Mary Jane? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's actually fucking hilarious. I think it would be so funny if you're like, hey, everybody, come on over. Everyone gets a caviar bump before bed. Before that, we have meat sticks on platters for everyone. But first, let's do this BHO experiment where I'm going to drop a pound of oil onto like some geothermal vent that I've dug up for the occasion and then you just blow everyone sky high like (laughs) there's no TikTok influencer who has ever managed to fucking like outdo something like that and I do have friends who man back in the like day before dabs were really even a thing when it was still like truly like hash hot knives all that kind of stuff and dabs were just becoming a thing and I was learning about it from all my friends who worked at high times a couple of them actually did try to manufacture their own BHO and nearly blew up their kitchen. Like it's really manufacturing, you know, if you're doing that stuff at home yeah. and you're not doing a solventless extraction, like you're actually using an extractor with some um, solvent, yeah. that shit can be crazy dangerous. There was a warehouse that blew up in downtown LA, I think even last year, where they yeah. were manufacturing some um, distillate or whatever they were trying to make. So. I think that would be fun, Mike. That would be, be a good way fun. to ring in your birthday this year. Yeah, March 28th. Uh, come come watch me explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Mine is so much more sedate and boring. Or at least you're going to be alive for it I to enjoy it. I'd definitely be alive for it. It'd be like everyone gets like a five milligram edible made with solventless and, you know. Um, yeah, what's your rich shop dream? My richy rich shopping dream would involve... So much French butter. Mm. So much French butter that everyone gets their own little pot of softened French butter and like a half a beautifully sliced fresh baguette. Yes. And I I I would just love to do one of the best dinners that I've ever had was with my dad in France. I was 16 and we were on a cycling trip. And he just laid out one night. He was like, okay, we're gonna go for it. And we went to this restaurant and we had the seven course meal. And he had a whole bottle of wine and I had half bottle of wine. And I just, I don't even remember all the things. I remember pike was on the menu and I had duck and we had like, I don't even know what else, but um, I just remember rolling out of there feeling so like I don't ever need to eat again. I felt so sated and gluttonous and we rode our bikes back up the hill to the little hostel that we were staying at. And I would just love to provide that kind of experience for my friends as a birthday. Or my other birthday idea that I would love to do, maybe not this year, but next year would be a, um, I have a friend who went glamping in the Sahara for her birthday. And I would love to do like a tent under the stars with just like every possible North African delicacy that would be available to like my group of 10 or 12 friends. And that would be like my richy rich. Do you think you could shop for that? No, I think I would just have to give like a chef, like a Moroccan chef, like here's a, you know, $50,000 budget or whatever. Oh yeah, definitely Mm -hmm. worth it. And also Moroccan hash, like just, you know, just give give it all to me, punch me in the face with it and then put me to sleep under the stars. Mm. Hopefully a lion will come and breathe on me. Curl up and lay on your legs. Mm-hmm. You wake up with a lion on your legs. Yeah, I, I don't think there are lions in the Sahara, but that's like part of my dream. <laughs> Look, if I'm gonna smoke out of Old Faithful, you can hang can out have, with a lion. I can have a lion <laughs> sleeping on me in the Sahara under the stars. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely, yeah. that sounds beautiful. I the the butter baguette situation sounds not only so doable for mm. yourself every day, Good but butter. would you want that like as your afternoon? 
you know, like your tea, like your break. Like, would you do that for yourself every afternoon? Like a, a heat up a little baguette, get a little French butter, yeah. a little crispy salt and mauled on or something? Yeah, I think that, you know, Americans are really funny about their like butter and cheese intake because it always makes me think of, uh, you know, when Kristen Wiig does her Paula Deen impression. She's like, boot her now, <laughs> boot her now, <laughs> saith, <laughs> boot her now. Mm-hmm. Um, the booter, the booter in America, people are funny about it because... I mean, did you grow up on margarine? Did you have margarine or butter in your house? I grew up on margarine because the news and the ads and the grocery stores, everybody was pushing it as the healthy alternative to butter, which may kill you and your children. Right. And yeah. then it was just affordable, too, for me. Like when I Very moved out of my parents' house and I went to theater school and all of a sudden I was on a budget, Yeah, I had you know, m- margarine in my fridge instead of butter. Totally. And with a, with a family who... Um, coupons were very important and clipped with purpose, mm-hmm. 100%. And also now I have Earth Balance, which is kind of margarine in my fridge as a, just a vegan butter alternative. But it is like something that I'm now spending money on again is good butter because I feel like having good butter and like a good piece of bread is as much of a treat to me as having like an ice cream sundae. You know what I mean? I absolutely do. Like I don't actually want sugar as much as I want beautiful creamy butter and a delicious piece of bread. With some salt. I fucking hear you. Mm. Fuck yes. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, I don't need mm, an ice cream mm. sandwich. I just need that tasty butter. Oh, man. Uh, and they... that's why I look like I do. <laughs> <laughs> this abundant, beautiful body. An abundant, buttery, beautiful bod. Mm-hmm. That's a great game. I like that game. If anyone wants to chime in with what they would spend their infinite money on when it comes to uh, food and smoke... Yeah. or any type of uh, cannabis thing, uh, let us know. And leave it in the comments on our YouTube, at Weed and Grub, now that we have a couple followers popping off. That's right. You know, l- l- drop us a line. And also, what's your caviar game? If you're into the row, I would like to know, because we have a picture up here on our screen that you can see if there's a salmon row, I think, probably, and yeah. then caviar. And I've had um, one or two experiences, I think, with really fancy Russian sturgeon caviar that I've been absolutely, I'm like, oh, of course, I've totally get it. But then I had an experience with some other caviar, sturgeon caviar that I think was from China that I really didn't like. And then I've had roe from various kinds of fish and have enjoyed it sometimes and other times not. Do you have like a roe rating, a roe ranking? Uh, I know what you mean. There have been a couple, I don't have a roe ranking, but there have been a couple that tasted really metallic Mm -hmm. and, um, and they just didn't have that salty, briny pop Yep. that I'm expecting. Mm-hmm. And I think that has to do with quality and yeah. and also maybe the tins that they're being put in are um like the 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 metal is like actually seeping in and marinating the little jewels. Right. I don't I don't know, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm right there with you. I would say my um row ranking, the number one row would be row V Wade. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I really did just think of that and had to try it. I knew you weren't going to give me a laugh, but I'm glad I said it. I'm fucking glad I said it. <laughs> it is very good. <sighs> Satisfied. It. What else do we have? <laughs> uh, Mark just, producer Mark wrote, I can't wait for you to see the edit of that moment. <laughs> Mark, did you do a back and forth? <laughs> yes, I'm so excited, producer Mark. Thank you so much. Actually, on oh, on this tip about fancy foods, I had made a video where I made a spicy salmon bagel, and I just wanted to say someone commented on it, and he was like, "I can't even listen to what you're saying because I'm just looking at that twenty five dollar smoked salmon." And I was like, "Okay, well, it was a Christmas gift." So, and then he wrote back, and he was like, he felt really bad, but I was like, "Why would you come for someone in the comments of a video?" Just because you disagree with an ingredient. It was just such a weird, people are just so weird. Like, why would you stop scrolling and be like, I can't listen to anything this bitch is saying because her salmon's expensive? And I was like, it was legitimately a gift mailed to me by some fisherman friends. Um, So I just thought that was weird. Also, spicy salmon bagel. If you ever want to make a salmon bagel where you take smoked salmon and then instead of cream cheese, you do sour cream and sliced jalapeno with oh. red onion. And then I also added sliced, I had roasted potatoes. So I added roasted potatoes. It was a crazy combination, but it was freaking satisfying. And did you make delicious. this up with what you had in your fridge? I did. It was kind of just like a 
you know, what I had going on at the time. Props. That sounds great. Also, sometimes I'm not a big cream cheese guy, especially with salmon, because they're both kind of like thick textures. Like when you bite through them, you get teeth marks on both. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a sour cream, even though, yes, it's still creamy. It's it's like a thinner, cooler, less less dense bite than the cream cheese is. Agree. That makes so much sense. Big agree. Wow. Yeah, I recommend trying this. Okay. And wait, potatoes on a bagel? Yeah, I know. But I had to get rid of them and I was like, ugh, I I just want to use them. And so I thought like thinly slicing them, it it worked, honestly, because of the sour cream. Yeah. Potatoes with sour cream, jalapenos with sour cream, smoked salmon with sour cream. They all went together. That's brilliant. Thank you. Dang, are you Jewish? No. Really? I'm like 100% Irish and Scottish and Norwegian. <laughs> so boring. five things. I'm 100% five things. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I were fucking interesting, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm 0% interesting. Because you're stepping up like deli. Like, you know how I'm like anti-Jewish deli- delicatessen mostly? If there was something like this in there, I feel like that would step up a lot of Jewish delis game. You think Russ and Daughters would take it on as a menu item? Yeah. Special. Um, it's the mayo for me. Uh, uh, a collab? A collab? Well, you Come know, on now. I was inspired by those absolutely insane sandwiches that you brought back at the end of the year uh, from Placerville. Yeah. Placerville, however you say it. Doesn't matter. You know, whatever that town is that had those wild sandwiches. I was really, really, because you brought me back a sandwich that was like a Thanksgiving feast sandwich that had mashed potato on it. Yeah. That was kind of my thinking with this. That's so, awesome. Mm, put potatoes on a bagel. Why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Thanks. Um, this is the point where we got to shout out the Try Guys. Ah, ha, ha, because they inspire people to do wild and wacky shit. Yo, they push the limits in a very like pleasing, uh, fun way. Like I really felt free shooting with them. Shout out to the whole team. And actually, well, I mean, shout out Keith, shout out Zach. But also I went to our mutual friend Brian Wool's birthday and uh, Desiree was also there and she's the one who had like set up the whole table and kept taking our toys away so we yeah. could move on she and kept it pushing cool hair she had that cool and she was wearing a taylor swift eras tour shirt uh when we hung out so i want to shout out desiree also nice yeah yeah it was just the most fun day at their awesome studio and we smoked purple haze and then they had just a stack of things to do while high and we got to um smell markers and we played lemon baseball and we um hit a car yeah we hit a car with the (laughs) lemon baseball um we get under gravity blankets we sat in the dark we um learned cool space facts uh it was just like a great time and you can watch the show it's under the try guys channel it's called smoke show and it was a blast and there's a half hour like edited version but then you can watch the whole unedited which i haven't seen yet on their youtube uh Patreon, there's a free tier where you can watch it for free. Yeah. And I just want to shout out YouTube for being so cool and so chill about, you know, things that should be chill. Mm -hmm. Like they love smoke show they They don't age gate anything they are open to a free market society where you can create and just do whatever you want and they are in full support of that and so i just want to say thank you youtube i really appreciate how much you appreciate us in honor of how cool youtube is i am not going to light this awesome joint that i brought (laughs) because uh, they would (laughs) will smoke it off camera right and they want you to (laughs) yeah they want me to not light it but i will talk about it (laughs) and um, how much we love it and how how much we're grateful that we get to do cool stuff like uh the try guys and smoke show and hang out with anyone who comes on this podcast or anyone who cares about cannabis and comedy and food like we do like we love it and you know sometimes we don't show it on youtube because um those guys are wild yeah they're wild they is and i also want to give the try guys props for with intention making a uh, a smoke show that like they i mean these guys i've known and followed them for uh, your carry, whole carry life. the eight. <laughs> Hold on, I got the math. Six, twelve. <coughs> uh, a while, mm-hmm. and for them to want to do this kind of show, knowing full well that. YouTube is going to tisk 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 them. I think it's so freaking cool and it's also like we're all adults. What are we doing? Let's go. Yeah. And like props for that. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. And you know, they are using their platform to raise awareness about the current situation that's going on with cannabis at a state and federal level with people being in prison and that like there was one comment that was really infuriating. It was like, "Why are you guys doing this dumb shit and you're not raising awareness of what's going on?" 
they just like we are trying to do the same thing, you know, like let people know about what's really good and important around what we love about cannabis and also the realities of what's happening to people who are still in prison yeah. for the plant. So exactly. And like, yeah. it, like the old saying is a tablespoon of salt helps the sugar move around. So you've yep. got to do both. That's what they say. Exactly. The salt is what's important. Roe v. Wade. Yep. <laughs> Overturned. Overturned. Overturned a year and a half ago, and I've been screaming about it ever since. Oh, my God. Your Russ and Daughters uh, spicy salmon sandwich mm -hmm. is Roe v. Wade overturned, and that's because you serve it open face, and then you put both halves on each I'm other. I'm never going to sell a Roe v. Wade overturned sandwich, dude. <laughs> no, we're overturning the overturning. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there to explain it to each person. <clears throat> Great. So, because right now it's... Roe v. Wade reinstated. Reinstated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did you see my hey, eyes panic about yeah, the word? Yeah. Oh, it's a Roe v. Wade overturned sandwich. Awesome. I support that. No, we do not. No, we do not. No, we don't. No. <laughs> overturned, overturned. Yeah. Overturned, overturned, reinstated. Yes. Fantastic. We'll just add a spoonful of roe to the sandwich. It'll be perfect. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to get to the news? Oh, yeah. Let's do the news. Um, and thanks again. Try Guys. That was cool. We'll come back literally anytime. Truly anytime. Um, the news is in in keeping with how we we've been starting out the our year with weed and grub is kind of not news news like last week we did the uh, big blueberry bang explosion that um uh, uh as a thought experiment that was so fun from a was he a physicist astrophysicist yeah so this week the news is that there was a weed dinner on the real housewives of beverly hills that i didn't hear about and nobody did <laughs> so we're reporting it now because it's not news but also, that's news. That is. It's a network show. It's on Bravo, Real Housewives. I'm not a Bravo head. I heard about it because I listened to uh, That's Messed Up, a SVU podcast with Lisa Traeger and Kara Clink, and they were talking about it because they are massive Bravo heads. And they were talking about, Lisa was like, yeah, I want to go get high with them and how like Denise Richards evidently showed up at this dinner and was just out of control, but she wasn't high. It seemed like maybe she was on some pills, mm. maybe some drinking, but it was catered by the herbal chef. Chris, oh, Chris? Chris Sage. That's cool. And um, I just thought it was so, and so this is the screen grab that we have up here is um, one of the Real Housewives, uh, Sutton, who decided at this sweet dinner to just light up a joint. And also that was like a big point of contention because people were like how rude for her to smoke at this dinner and it was just really funny so i reached out to a friend of the pod jordan who is our real housewives correspondent to just be like what's up with this do you know about this dinner and she was like yeah it was totally crazy everyone kind of went off the rails the weirdest part she said was that chris came out and was asking everyone what they wanted their dosage to be for their dinner he was like i recommend 10 milligrams and a lot of them were like five milligrams i'll do five like totally respectable and then there was one who was like i'll do one milligram and everyone was like why bother yeah and um and then this gal sutton just lit up a joint and i guess denise richards was all kind of fucked up on uh pills and but the whole thing like just passed me by in popular consciousness. And I just thought that was such a big deal. It's huge. That there was a, a cannabis dinner, an infused dinner on this show. One of the most popular yeah. reality shows of all time. And I I hadn't heard about it. And that to me just signified such a shift in popular consciousness that this wasn't like plastered all over every fucking because I I read news. Right. And I didn't hear about it. Like it didn't even pop. If I'm hearing you correctly. It's good that it wasn't a big deal. Yes. Is that what, kind of what you're saying? Yeah. That's cool. That's a cool way to think of it. Because I was thinking of it as like this screen grab has the Bravo logo, a woman smoking a joint, uh -huh. and that was on a, sh a TV show. And that is like, whoa. Whoa. Like, what does that mean? It should be a huge deal. But the fact that it's not is actually an even bigger deal. Yep. Fucking great point. Will, exactly you, will right. you keep saying more about that? Because it's so spot on. Or if you pulled up Jordan, what Jordan said. No, I mean, there, the, I don't think there's much more to say about it without like recapping the episode, which just sounds like I think it was actually kind of like an iconic dinner. My understanding, not being a Real Housewives fan, is that like we all know about the iconic dinners where someone like hisses like their, that white cat meme and like, you know, things get thrown and people get really upset. I think this dinner was 
very specifically like that like things did get kind of oh, out of hand okay i don't know if it was because of the weed or not but i think the fact that the cannabis aspect of it wasn't reported and i mean it, what when i looked it up it was like yeah it was in us weekly and daily beast sure and but everything. that's like publicists doing their job yeah it wasn't it wasn't i didn't know about it until i heard lisa and kara talking about it on a podcast and then i reached out to jordan and was like i'm sorry what and she was like um yeah what did she write hang on a second she just wrote um hang on a second <laughs> tell mike if he ever salts your latkes again i will oh yeah murder him she does say that something yep she did say that and then she <laughs> she said um denise richards didn't even eat the weed dinner that's what's so annoying i think she took a xanax or something before because she came because that was not weed and all these lame ass housewives were like i'll have one milligram and then my favorite sutton lights up a joint and is just like fuck this but denise makes a big talk about how she doesn't smoke weed before she started and i guess yeah it was just like you know there was some back and forth about the weed um aspect of it but it seems like it was pretty normalized and pretty freaking mainstream if the real housewives are you know, yeah, just consuming on camera and not really worrying about it. I think it's great. That's an exciting thing for any. I, I I hope, including myself, and if you're interested, like that means that we we can make weed content, but it's never going to be enough to actually move the needle anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Like the stories of Willie Nelson smoking at the White House are from a time that makes it like, holy crap, what the fuck. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it would move the needle in the same way now, which is actually a good thing in terms of normalization, Duh, federal legalization, Duh, people in prison. Yeah. Like all of the things that we beat the drum on all the fucking time, but in the media and in culture, yeah. it's kind of like a blase. It is what it is, whatever, whatever kind of a thing. Now it's just a piece of the, it's part of the background. And that's, you know, I mean, obviously we, we don't want it to fade completely into the background and be totally normalized until we have all of the, um, things around it that we are talking about, right? Getting people out of prison and making sure that nobody is suffering for lack of access, that, you know, medical patients still are having access in the right way, that it's not entirely being commodified by fucking huge multinational corporations when it does go federally legal. All those things, yes, but also, what's up? I'm just smoking a joint here at this dinner party and that's totally fine. Great. Yeah. So exciting. That's actually a really great news story. I, I like more of right? this in the new It's year. like a not news news story. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And also, I would love to smoke with the Real Housewives. I don't want to ever meet any of them. <laughs> 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 Although, I feel like they're in the same camp, the um, Vanderpump Rules people. Yeah. I just think of all reality. I, I don't even know if they're related. Is Vanderpump Rules related to Real Housewives? I think not. Yes. Uh, one of them was the person who... I can't I can't just listen to you because it'll be dead silence. But Mark is saying yes. <laughs> Mark is saying yes. He said it's because of the restaurant. There's a tie in through the oh, restaurant. OK, pump. Yes. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so um, the uh, reality stars of that show have been kind of in your world. Yeah. Which is really interesting because Ariana Maddox. Well, listen, Ariana, I know you listen to this podcast. Where is your sandwich shop? Oh. We have been waiting yes. for years for this sandwich shop to open. I did a show with you at UCB where you're there promoting your sandwich shop. Where's the shop? Shout out when Lindsay Ames. When is it Ames. opening? Make Shout out sandwich. Lindsay Ames. Shout out Billy Lee. Or um, Yeah, Billy Lee. Shout out Tom Sandoval, weirdly sitting in the front row at my comedy store show. I did not appreciate that because <laughs> everyone was looking at you instead of the people on stage. And I think you knew that. Oh, absolutely. And I do not like that, Tom Sandoval. But overall, you were very nice and it was a good time. But Ariana, where is your sandwich shop? Yeah, Ariana, we want to know. I want to come and eat a motherfucking sandwich and then interview you about it yes. for my sub stack. Um, but you, point being, Ariana, you have met her and know her a little bit. And yeah. I met her backstage at your show. Yeah, she was Lindsay very nice. Ames's show. And um, she was so fucking nice. So I would want to like hang out and smoke weed with her. Um, I don't know about the rest of them, though. Um, or Billy Lee was super nice as well. Yeah, That's and true. great hang for smoking. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if I would. They just all seem so fucking crazy you know yeah yeah denise richards especially but i mean jesus that's what being married to charlie sheen will do to you i guess i guess so i mean i met that guy when i interviewed him for a high times um cover feature and i spent a couple of hours with him and he is yeah he just like radiates insanity but he's also incredibly charismatic and cool i had a great time with him but yo in that dose mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't even know he was super nice. He did nothing weird with me, but uh, I cannot imagine that he was easy to be <laughs> married to. So maybe I'd be popping pills too 
Anywho, mm. Real Housewives, smoking weed. I love it. And also, congrats, Chris. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's cool. That's a cool feather in your macaroni cap. Yeah, the herbal chef. Yeah. On Real Housewives. Fuck yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, not bad that he's a real hot smoke show himself. He is a hot smoke show. So, oh, are we doing this? Um, Yeah, you want to? Do we have time? We have time. We have time to do this. We're going to okay. cut. You know what? Let's do a two for one. Okay. Let's eat these cookies while we do a card poll. Okay, cool. You let's, know what I mean? Because you have been bringing snacks to every single episode. I've been trying. And um, I have brought them once, which <laughs> I think is even. And so. Yeah, you brought that beautiful banana pudding. I brought some banana pudding once. You have been. Your and snack you brought game. sandwiches. Come on. You're doing great. All right. Thanks. That's okay. Yeah, I'm, prob- I'm probably doing pr- a little bit better than you. And you're so. doing fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> And so this week, I'm I'm stealing your thunder, unless you want me no, to no, talk no, while please, you shuffle. No, 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 please, please, go ahead. Um, I opened them up, because these were actually a gift from your family. Oh. I received these in my Christmas package from Wendy and Steve and Patrick and Matthew. Thank you so much. Super amazing package. And um, Milano Holiday Double Dark Chocolate Cookies were in there. So I brought them in to share. This is such a top uh, sandwich cookie for me. Yeah, yeah. Such a top sandwich cookie. Number if one. I were to rank, this would probably be third for me oh wow number one double stuffed oreo slash nope number one double stuffed oreo okay number two double stuffed el fudge Mm -hmm. number three milano wow okay that's a good ranking i've never had the fudge ones that you're talking about oh i will find them and bring them um i would say um pepperidge farm has a really good stuffed cookie that i enjoy Above that for me would be the Oreo Devil stuff, and Milano for me is number one. This is your number one? Mm, it's my number one. Hey, great job to my family, and yeah. thank you for sharing these with me. Thank you, Glazers. Yeah, so I'm going to eat this on camera while we do what? Yeah, so you're going to, here, take this um, Animal Oracle deck. This is mm. a um, deck of cards that I brought in to just do a one-card pull for a little, um, you know, just energetic. It's not forecasting or anything. It's just like, you know, I sat down on New Year's Eve and I lit an intention candle and I did all sorts of stuff for like letting go of the old year and welcoming in the new. And I pulled a really cool card that I will tell you about afterwards if you want to hear about it. Quite cool. But it was really meaningful and cool for me to just like, oh, kind of like focus and meditate on and be like, that's neat. It's a good little harbinger for me. Obviously, this isn't meaningful beyond whatever it is that you want it to be. But, um, And I also pulled a card for my friend Allison, and she felt like it was really connected to what she wanted for the new year. So I thought I would bring it in and I'm offer all about you a card, this. Paul. I'm a new me swift E because I'll tell <laughs> you what. Um, every day I am saying my mantra and my manifestations out loud every single day. I haven't missed a day since I think beginning of December. And f- Three different things have come true that were a part of my out loud manifestation. Sometimes I wake up and I say I'm in bed. More times than not, I wait until I'm in the shower so I can really commit to them because I think shower energy is its own like kind of awakening energy. And I can you can really get in there and say I'm like you mean them. But either way, I'm all about this stuff this year. It used to scare me because I don't want to go to a fortune teller and then feel like my my flow is being swayed by rocks. I like free will is so important to me that I don't want anyone to infiltrate my mind with something that might be, um, uh, uh, it might knock me off of my course and my sure. course is my course, but I'm open to this now because I've seen the power of saying things out loud and having them happen. So let's fucking pull an animal. Cause this is exciting. Okay. So you can just shuffle them however okay. you want. Also, I, I rambled about that because I'm nervous. No, I know. But I mean, the cool thing about it is that it's it's it has whatever meaning you assign to it. So like I've been pulling cards consistently every single day since New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. And there are some days where I feel like it's super meaningful and I'll actually journal about it. And then there are other days where I'm like, nah, I don't feel like I need to listen to that. OK. So it's for you. It's whatever you think. So you shuffled them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you just cut them and hand them back to me. And this is, again, this is the Druid Animal Oracle deck. Um, And I'm excited to see. Okay. All right. Cut and handed. So your animal is the Earth Dragon. (gasps) Cool. Ooh, the artwork is sexy. Hold on to that while I do a little reading for you. The Earth Dragon, the keywords are power, potential, and riches. Does that feel right? It does. I mean, you're circling everything I'm saying out loud every morning. 
Um, Whoa. The Earth Dragon begin- brings us face to face with our potential. Within us, we have a treasure house of riches, of powers and capacities, which we can learn how to use. In the past, we may have been denied access by the guardian of this treasure, but now we are coming to understand that this sometimes fierce guardian is in reality an aspect of ourselves. By coming to know and love the Earth Dragon, we will be able to unlock the secrets of our heart, and at the same time, we will find ourselves discovering the beauty and the power that lie within the hearts of those around us and in the very Earth itself. I (laughs) feel so seen. Good. I am an Earth Dragon. Awesome. This is the year for me and my riches and my potential. Thank you, Mary Jane. You're welcome. What a great pull. (laughs) <laughs> Could I do one for you? I'm not sure how, but yeah, can we do I, one? I can do one really quickly. I'll just shuffle and... Um, do I need to hold I... them or read sure, them? I'll, I'll cut. Uh, I can read, but I'll I'll cut. I know how to read. Oh, you want to read? Yeah. Okay. I'll probably do it in a British accent. Here, pull that top one. That's mine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. What is it? Horse. A horse. Okay. I'll um, read it while you hold it so it charges up with the energy. Okay, hang on a second. Of horse. I'm going to horse find woman. it. I, the last time I pulled a salmon, which felt super cool because my dad was a salmon biologist and the salmon is all about returning to the source to renew. Yeah. Do um, you have a tattoo like that too? I do. Yeah. I have a salmon tattoo. Okay, horse. Keywords, the goddess, the land, and travel. Mm. Meaning, the spirit of each... Oh, each... Horse, another pronunciation is ech. So Great. Um, the spirit of ech calls us to journey, to travel. This may manifest itself as a desire to travel in the physical world, or we may be drawn to voyaging in the inner realms. She brings us energy and speed and connects us to the power of both the land and the sun. The horse goddess is patronus of the complete life cycle of birth, death, and afterlife and rebirth. By working with the spirits of Ech, we will grow to feel comfortable with every aspect of the life cycle, knowing that the goddess protects and guides us through each of its stages. Beautiful. Wow. I love her. Thanks, Mike. Horse and the dragon. Cool. Weed and grub, horse and dragon. <laughs> horse and dragon, moving moving into 2024 with some horse and dragon energy. Absolutely. Cool. I feel dragony. Cool beans. I love it for you. Yeah. I'm, Good. I'm, I've, got a, I've got a hunger and I'm, I don't want to burn it down, but I want to s- swirl all over the top of it with my shadow, you know? Okay. Yeah. That hey. was great. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah, you're welcome. Have you had a Milano yet? I haven't. I'm going to have one right now while we do our uh, next bit, which is creamed corner, I believe. Yeah. So which while, is you, yours. while you munch and crunch, I've got another celebration. This is a this is a nice celebratory episode. So, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. My very first job was working at Emo's Pizza. I sold weed out of the back to a bunch of people, and I worked the cash register in front and did a little bit of pizza making, if you would call it that, and a little bit of prep, if you would call it that. I mean, you know, it's a chain. It's not hard. Um, and I love Emo's Pizza. Every time I go back to St. Louis, I get it. It's the square beyond compare. I'm on their grid next to Simone Biles. They follow very few people. <laughs> I made the cut. Feels great. And now, big news, a bill is up for St. Louis-style Provel cheese. And Provel cheese, Emo's put it on the map for Provel cheese to become the official cheese of Missouri. How do I vote from here? Wow. Let's get it going. Missouri State Re- Representative Andrew Schwadron, a Republican, I don't like that, uh, <laughs> tossed the idea through HB 2819, dubbing Provel cheese as the prominent St. Louis cuisine. Well, that's a little cuisine. I don't know about that. It is filled with chemicals and it melts weird because of those chemicals and it's not real cheese. I think you can't put cheese... You can't put the word cheese on it. It has to be like cheese type substance. Cheese product. Cheese product. <laughs> and so the idea of it being a, pr- well, that does kind of fit as a prominent St. Louis cuisine. <laughs> I, <laughs> would you vote for this? Of course. Okay. Especially because nobody knows Provel. Nobody has had it unless you've been to Missouri. You've ordered Emos to be delivered to you through like good Gold Belly or something. But everybody knows what it is. They're like, oh yeah, it has that weird cheese, right? That weird cheese product, mm-hmm. right? So yes, is it the prominent cuisine? I mean, I might also throw toasted ravioli in there, mm. but I don't know that that has the same. Well, that, uh, let me backtrack on that because we're talking about the official cheese of Missouri, not cuisine of Missouri. So I do think it's the official cheese of Missouri. <laughs> and um, 
So shout out to Emos, the Square Beyond Compare, and shout out to Provel Cheese. And the bill has been introduced and read at least two times on the floor. That's so fun. That's like, amazing. We're number one in crime. We're number one in murder. Yeah. We have like potholes that will swallow your car in downtown Missouri. Yeah. But we are taking the time twice to read the official cheese ballot on the floor. Um, and boy, oh boy, do I hope something gets passed. You said he's a Republican? Yeah. It seems like he's trying to do a little smoke screen in, some, <laughs> in front of some of the other issues that are going on, including uh, abortion access and all of the other fucking problems that are happening in Missouri. He's I, like, I, but let's talk cheese. Guys, how fun is this? Come on, Provel. Everybody loves Provel. <laughs> but I okay. will also, okay, but my flip of that, my pushback against that is we do need fun. We do need things that enliven, enrich, and build community in St. Louis because it is such a dangerous fucked up place and it has only gotten worse every time i visit so if we can rally around the st louis cardinals baseball team the blues our hockey team winning the stanley cup and that can build community and uh, morale i think that an official cheese of missouri is also a great morale builder in a time when we are number one in all the things we don't want to be fair enough yeah i heard i, I heard heard <laughs> Sorry, got that uh, turn of phrase wrong. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Tablespoon of salt. <laughs> I heard you. Um, do you think that there would be a Proval cheese head <gasps> kind of like Wisconsin Ooh. sort of like style? And it's like melty. <laughs> Is it just like a, like a melting? <laughs> it looks like a cheese chandelier. It would just look like, like someone shot a load on your head. When I say cheese, you say product. Cheese. Product. Cheese. Product. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Would buy merch. Yeah. Would wear hat. A Provel a Provel hat? Yeah, a melting cheese Provel hat. Would buy. That's awesome. Put it on the goddamn Missouri flag. Let's do it. Yeah. We need something. <laughs> we really do. So in this case, yes, definitely a smoke screen. Also a morale booster. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good cream corner. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get to Buds of the Week and get out of here? Let's get to the Buds of the Weeks. Real quick, too. I wanted to shout out. I was going to smoke this on camera and then I elected not to because YouTube, but we will light it up afterwards. I'm really enjoying these um, Substance Premium pre-rolls and you can check them out. Go to CaliforniaSubstance.com and they donate $8.46 of every pack towards um, reparations and uh, justice for getting incarcerated people out of prison. And um, that $8.46 was inspired by the eight minutes and 46 seconds that it was took for George Floyd to be killed. And it's very specifically about um, ending mass incarceration. And uh, it's just like they're a cool cannabis company with a cool... Uh, an important mission and i just really wanted to say that before we end this pod because i was going to smoke it and then i didn't californiasubstance.com californiasubstance.com they're called substance pre-rolls they come in these cool little i keep saying cool they're so cool it's so cool everything's so cool they come in small packs they're sort of uh i think what most people would call a dog walker nice little personal joint size perfect for me share the pack not the joint tm it says on the side i just dig them that's awesome. They yeah. are really great. They're awesome. Let's and cool. Try one as soon as we are done with this. They're cool and awesome. How are they? Uh, awesome and cool and <laughs> awesome and cool. Like my buds of the week, <laughs> who are super cool. Transition queen over Yo, here. Yo, segue king and transition queen. My buds of the week are Amanda and Olivia, who have started the Big Business Baby Women podcast. They are stoners. They are friends. They are women doing business. They are big business baby women. And I just went on the pod, had a great time with them. They're very funny. And they're friends with just an awesome vibe. And honestly, sitting with them made me... Um, not yearn for, but like really have fond memories of our first days podcasting together when you and I were just like, we don't know what we're doing, but it's a vibe. Yeah. Like not to say that these guys didn't know what they were doing. They super did. They had a whole team of people with lights and sound equipment, which you and I did not because it was just us. But it did remind me of that, like that just bubbling energy of like just getting started as friends and like setting out on a cool adventure and you don't know where you're going to end up. So shout out to those two for starting something and being cool about it and having me on and um, good luck and subscribe to Big Business Baby Woman, Big Business Baby Women podcast. I also just think it's so funny because they ask you questions like, you know, um, 
in what ways are you baby? But then also <laughs> they legitimately want to know about your big business aspirations. And they asked me to show them how to crack an egg with one hand. Like we had a good time. That's a blast. Yeah, it was a really good time. They also made me sing some of the mean comments on my videos, like Fun. reading mean tweets, but we had to sing them. It was good. I got to sing about having um, some dude told me that I had Sanpaku eyes. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> We could talk about it off pod. It was crazy. Okay. Yeah. And, but you sang about it. Or you sang it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, shout out those guys. Good butt of the cool week. Who are cool and awesome. <laughs> My cool, awesome butt of the week is Alex Lose it. Lewis. Loser. Jesus Christ. Take two. My butt of the week this week is Alex Lewis um, at I8, the number eight, I ate a thumbtack. Um, Alex and I, we were at Brian Wool's birthday party. Hadn't seen each other in a long time. Great to reconnect with him. He is part of the band Lou Burger. Um, so Keith from Try Guys also has a great band called Lou Burger that um, Alex and our friend Huey are both in. And Brian opens for them. And they go on a tour. They just did Off-Broadway. They're about to go on tour again. Great, great dudes. Uh, especially Alex. I really connect with him on a lot of things. But also... Like we talked because we were at a bar for Brian's birthday. Alex has never had a sip of alcohol because he's so scared to throw up. And so he's ne he's only thrown up three times in his life. I hope he doesn't mind me telling this tale. Um, but uh, once when he was like five, once when he was seven, and once when Lou Berger was on a college tour and some fraternity was like, we're going to make dinner for you guys. And they made them bone in chicken parmesan. And so you know that that cheese was melted, you know that those bread crumbs were crispy, and you know that bone and chicken was raw as could be on mm. the inside there, and it's the third time he puked. Uh, he's just a straight shooter, a big heart, really talented musician, and uh, uh, it was really great to reconnect with him, and I hope we hang out more in the future. So my butt of the week this week is Alex. Nice, butt of the week. I can't wait to follow him and learn more about his work. He's freaking talented yeah yeah i know that lou Berger are just like all over the country right now doing cool stuff so they are fucking awesome i mean good luck getting a ticket but they're about to go back on tour so if you can get a ticket you should absolutely go see them live Fantastic. and enjoy brian's stand-up his his opening set for them is crazy so amazing yeah good butt <laughs> of the week tied into try guys keith i'm trying to make connections yeah, I saw you connected with a camel the other night. I fucking... Okay, we'll end on this. Ah. This is why LA is amazing. I was supposed to go support a friend and go to their stand-up show and watch it, but I was walking to the comedy store and there was a gym opening, a gym <laughs> opening, mm -hmm. and they had a petting zoo. And I can't think of a more brilliant marketing thing to get you to go into the gym and possibly talk about memberships than the ability to meet a camel named Chico some alpacas, little pigs and goats running around. Like, what a dream. So I'm walking to the comedy store. I see a camel eating a bunch of hay. I was like, can I come pet that? And the woman was like, of course. And so I go meet this camel named Chico. We have a great time. I'm taking pictures with him. And I missed my friend's show. But if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, if you, if you don't understand why I got held up, then you ain't a real friend. I would never hold it against anyone if if I was like, where were you? I thought you were going to come to the show. And instead, you got to meet a camel named Chico. Yo, sorry. I understand. Camels are important. Camels are important, especially when I didn't get the gym membership. Oh, okay. didn't fall for it. <laughs> you just got in and out of there with just a camel pet. <laughs> exactly. Good job. Made a new friend. That's the 2024 energy. Um Freaking awesome. Well, this has been a good time, Mike. Uh, everyone, time. check us out uh, on Instagram at Weed and Grub, on TikTok at Mike and Mary Jane. Email us at wgweedandgrub.com if you have questions, complaints, topics you want to hear us cover, things you never want to hear us talk about again. What else we got? Uh, I, I really think that's it. Okay. That was great. If you want to DM me um, at this, uh, it's the mail for me. I'm interested in sandwich suggestions. Yeah, email or DM Mike at Glazer at Boohoo. No, nope, I'm I'm banned for a month to, from on Instagram. Are you really? Uh huh. No, I'm banned for a month. I got a. I I tried to do appeal. I so we'll we'll we can end on this, but I put um. Uh, the guy who jumped into the um, water at the Bass Pro Shop naked. Yes. When he got arrested, his body looked like um, Venus de Milo. I saw So I that. put a picture of him next to de Milo, but I forgot to uh, cover his bits on the picture mm -hmm. and it blew up and it went viral and then someone reported it and it got taken down and then I did an appeal and then I lost that and then I did an appeal to the oversight committee 
and we're in we're we're in talks, but I'm going to lose that too, of course. And I got a a message from them today saying your account will not be pushed out to non followers until further notice, and you cannot um, you can post, you can do all of those things, but we will not be promoting your account on the platform uh, for for a moment. Okay, I have a workaround. We'll talk about it offline. I would love it because. <laughs> I am a part of a community finally <laughs> that I like Jesus. am loving I just had and this, I can't even celebrate with them. Oh, I had the same thing happen in my account because of cannabis related stuff and I got restricted and there's a workaround. We'll talk about it off pod. I'm so glad to bring it up because I'm a Swifty and I want to be a part of that community. Got it. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>